In this lesson, we are going to talk about the slopes of both parallel and perpendicular lines and talk a little bit about what that looks like graphically and what that looks like in the equations. So we are going to learn how to use slopes to determine how lines relate graphically to each other. And our key concept here with slopes of parallel lines is that if we have two lines that are not vertical lines and they are parallel, then the slopes are going to be the same. They will be equal. If the slopes of two distinct non-vertical lines are equal, then the lines are parallel. So this is like the converse of the first, first statement. If the lines are parallel, their slopes are equal. If the lines are equal, excuse me, if the slopes of the lines are equal, then the lines will be parallel. Here's an example for you of some parallel line equations. Y equals 1 half X minus 4. We can see that the slope is 1 half for both equations. So therefore they are parallel. Any two vertical lines or horizontal lines are parallel, um, not vertical and horizontal to each other, but all vertical lines are parallel to each other and all horizontal lines are parallel. Here's an example of some horizontal lines that would be parallel. Anything that's y equal to a number will be parallel to all of those lines. Similarly, anything with x equals a number um, will also be parallel to each other, but the x equals and the y equals lines are not parallel to each other. It's just all the x equals and all the, all the y equals separately. So how do we figure out um, whether or not two lines are parallel? Well, we can't just assume by the graph because they look parallel that they are parallel. We actually have to go ahead and find the slope of each line to determine whether or not they're parallel. So let's go ahead and take a look at the slope of each of these lines. Well, each line that we are given two points on the line and we only need two points to determine the line. And remember our slope formula. formula. So we can find the slope of line one, I'll call that M1. And that's going to equal Y2 minus Y1. I'll call Y2 negative four. So let's do negative four minus Y1, which is five and that will be divided by um, y, excuse me, x2, which is 2, minus x1, which is negative 1. So that gives me negative 9 over 2 plus 1, which is 3. So this gives me a slope of negative 3. And what do we get for our slope of our second line? Well, line 2, let's take the second one again. I'm going to use this as x1, or excuse me, x2, y2. So on the top are always the y variables, so it's going to be negative 4, subtract from that, positive 3. The x variable then is negative 1, minus, and on the top we have a negative 3 for the x variable. So just keep track of your signs on these, it's so easy to get messed up. Negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7, and then on the bottom we have negative 1 minus a minus 3, which is negative 1 plus 3, which gives us a positive 2. So our slope on this one is a negative 3.5. So we can see that these two slopes are not the same. So our st second step says to compare the slopes. Since those slopes are not equal, um, these lines are not parallel. Okay, so you can just write that the lines are not parallel. All right, so here's an example for you. If we have line 3 contains points A and B and line 4 contains points C and D, are they parallel? Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can come up with those slopes and I'll give you the solution when you come back. All right, I hope you gave those a try. Um, for line 3, you should have gotten a slope of negative one-third. For line 4, your slope turns out to be positive one-third. So therefore, those two lines are not parallel, okay? What is the equation of the line parallel to negative three x minus five that contains point negative one-eight? Well, in these problems, when we're writing the equations of parallel lines, the very first thing we need to do is to go ahead and identify what the slope is. Remember, the slope is the number that is in front of x right here. So our slope is negative 3. 
and then we're going to use the point-slope formula to go ahead and write an equation. And the point-slope formula says the difference y minus y1 is equal to the slope times x minus x1. Now remember, the, the x and the y without the subscripts are just our variables. So we're going to have y minus something equals our slope. We already said our slope is negative 3. And since this is a parallel line, it's the same slope, so we want to put negative 3 in there. And then we're going to take that times x minus the x variable. Okay, so the only thing left to do is to go ahead and plug in what our x and y variables are for our point right here. So this one is, remember the first one is x and the second one is y. So y minus 8 is equal to negative 3 times x minus a minus 1. Well, let's just clean that up a little bit. Our equation turns out to be y minus 8 is equal to negative 3 times x. And oh, I need my parenthesis in here. Sorry about that. Uh, x minus a minus 1 is x plus 1. So don't leave uh, double negatives in there. Just make sure you only have one sign for each thing. Okay, here's one for you to try on your own. Go ahead and pause the video, and we'll go through that one when you get back. All right, I hope you gave that a try. Let's take a look. This one, what is the equation of the line that's parallel to this line? Well, remember, the first thing we need to do is identify the slope. So in this one, our slope, there's just a negative sign. Well, what does that mean? That really means that our slope is equal to negative 1, right? So that's what our slope is. Once we know the slope, we should be able to use the point-slope formula. So we're going to go y minus. Now the y variable in our point is 3. So I'm going to go y minus 3 is equal to our slope, which we said was negative 1, times our x variable, or x variable minus um, negative 5. Well, x minus a minus 5 is going to be an x plus 5. So there is the formula for an equation parallel to that line that goes through the point negative 5, 3. When two lines are perpendicular, so now we're going to switch gears to perpendicular lines, the product of their slopes is negative 1. Okay, and they're what we call their, their opposite reciprocals. So our key concept says, if two non-vertical lines are perpendicular, then the product of their slopes is negative 1. The converse is, if the products of the slopes of two lines are negative 1, that means the lines are perpendicular. Now, all horizontal and vertical lines are perpendicular to each other. So if you have an equation y equals 3 and x equals 1, those would be perpendicular lines. Well, let's take a look at some examples here. Um, in this problem, it says, Lines L1 and L2 are neither horizontal nor perpendicular, excuse me, neither horizontal nor vertical, so they both have a slope to them. We want to know whether or not they're perpendicular to each other. Well, our first step is always going to be to find the slope of each line. The slope of line L1, we have two points, 0, negative 4, and negative 4, 2. And the slope of that line turns out to be negative 3 over 2. We can calculate the slope of line L2 using the point 4, 3 and negative 5, negative 3. And that slope turns out to be 2 thirds. So are these opposite reciprocals? If we flip one over and change the sign, are they negative reciprocals? Well, it looks like they are. Another way to find that is to multiply them together to see if we get negative 1. And these are opposite reciprocals. So therefore, yes, they are perpendicular lines. All right, here's one for you to try on your own. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can come up with your answer, and we'll talk about it when you get back. All right, hope you gave that a try. Let's take a look at what we have. This one says we have a line L3 and L4. We want to know if they're perpendicular. Well, let's go ahead and calculate what is the slope of line 3 equal to. Well, remember the slope is y2 minus y1, so it's going to be negative 1 minus 7, divided by the x terms, which is going to be 3 minus 2. That gives me negative 8 over 
1, which is negative 8. What do we get for the slope of line 4? Well, that one's going to be 7 minus 6 divided by 8 minus a minus 2, which gives us 1 over 8 plus 2, which is 10. And when we take a look at those slopes, these would have to be opposite reciprocals. They are not opposite reciprocals, therefore they are not perpendicular. Here's our sign for perpendicular. Problem number four, writing equations of perpendicular lines. It says, what is an equation of the line perpendicular to this line that contains this point? Well, the first thing we want to do is identify the slope, and that we can do just by looking at the equation. We can identify that slope as long as it's in slope-intercept form or point-slope form. We know that our slope is one-fifth, so slope is equal to one-fifth. Then we need to find the slope of the perpendicular line. Well, we know that the slope of the perpendicular line, I'll call that m sub perpendicular, will be the opposite sign. This one's positive, so it's going to be negative, and then just flip this fraction over, negative 5, right? So now we can use our formula, y minus, now our y term is negative 4, so this is actually going to be y plus 4, is equal to our slope of negative 5 times x minus the x term, which is 15, and there's your equation. Here's another one for you to try. Go ahead and pause the video again and see if you can come up with the answer. All right, I hope we gave that one a try. Let's take a look at this one, what we get. What is the equation of the line perpendicular to this one that contains negative 3, 7? Well, again, we're going to look at our slope of negative 3. So the slope of the perpendicular line is going to be the opposite reciprocal, which is going to be positive 1 over 3. So now use your point slope formula, y minus, now our y variable is right here, 7, right, y minus 7, and that's going to equal our slope, which is 1 third, parenthesis x minus, now our x variable right here is negative 3, so this is actually going to make that x plus 3, and there's your equation. All right, here is your lesson check. It says line AB contains points A and B, line CD contains points C and D. Are AB and CD parallel, perpendicular, or neither? So you're going to have to go ahead and calculate the slope of AB and the slope of CD and compare those, and then write whether it's parallel, perpendicular, or neither based on those slopes. Um, number four, what's an equation of the line perpendicular to this one that contains that point? very similar to the last two problems that I just did. So bring your answers to these to class, and we'll see you next time.